I'm about as comfortable as the last time I was shopping at Target. Ooh. Well, hello guys, and welcome to the first of the actual upholstery on the 48 Chevy. I am working on door panels and side panels for the rear seat at the moment. I'm actually going to focus more on the door panels, but I did want to show you one aspect of these rear side panels. Um, and then I'll sew that together. I have the uh, left hand one sewn together laying on the trunk there already. Um, but before I do begin, I want to send you the disclaimer here that although I really enjoy it, 20 years ago I went through schooling for upholstery and I've done some stuff since then, but it hasn't been actual sewing up raw materials to form covers and door panels and so forth. Um, so I am by no means a professional. I do enjoy it. I really want to get back into it. Um, but, you know, for you professionals out there that may happen upon this video, give me a break. Okay, let's get into the side panel here. All right, so I have my panel cut out. Now this is just door panel, um, water resistant cardboard. They actually have, it's almost more of a tar paper material, the original, and it was very thin. So they like tripled. They stack three layers on top of each other. Comes out to about eighth of an inch, which is what this is. I think I got this from a place called Automotive Interiors something. I'll put it on here if I can find it again. But just search for door panel cardboard. A lot of guys will go sometimes even with aluminum, sometimes with uh, plastic. There's a lot of options these days. I just went with something more original. Now what I'm after is these tack strips here that hold the leading edge um, of the panel. It's just like a carpet tack strip basically that they put in along the walls. So I'm going to salvage that off the old panel. Now if I didn't have that or it was completely shot, um, another option could be, you know, you can go to the hardware store and get these uh, threaded or fluted nails, but I wouldn't want to, you know, I think they'd tear through pretty easily, so you could take some of this plumber's tape or whatever you call it and use that as a strip so it wouldn't pull through. Maybe some fender washers, maybe JB weld the heads to this strip. Just something to reinforce the nail heads. But I don't have to do that, and I'll go through cutting this out on the door panel cutting the holes, everything. But for now, I'm going to get this out. Basically, just going to come in here and, and pull. Now for the part that can really get you messed up in upholstery is making sure you got the right side the right way you want it. You just scoot that over. This should go on just like it was. Um, but I'm actually going to take this back off. So this is the bottom side of the panel and when I'm sewing it, those nails would be constantly catching on the sewing table and just being the general pain in the rear. And that'll, that'll be the last edge that I pull tight and fold over anyway. So I'm going to get everything else attached and then I'll put the tack strip on there and cinch her down.
Okay, so as you saw, um, we have our Dacron polyester filling, which I'll get into later on the door panels. Got our material on there. So we will flip it over and put the tack strip on. I'm going to go along and make sure all our little spikes are straight and pointed in the right direction. Now it's just going to be a matter of pulling it as tight as I can and getting her set on the nails there. Here we have new versus old. Looking pretty good. Still need to cut the hole through the material for our handle. But other than that, now on these, the only visible edge we're going to see is this front edge, and that's going to be up against the wind lace of the front door. So that is why all this exposed stitching and rough edges are there. Doesn't matter. Got the nice padded material. So, I guess we can move on to the uh, door panels and we'll get into the meat, the meat of what I'm doing here. Now, before we get into sewing and all that kind of fun stuff, um, 
just thought I'd show you, tell you just very briefly what I have here. As you can see, this is a Juki, it's a DDL5530. Now, for any of you serious professional upholsters out there, um, you probably already know that this is just a little bit on the light side for a professional shop. Um, where this came from, I bought it for $100, $150 from extended family of mine. Uh, my great uncle started a business, oh my, way back in the late 40s, 50s, um, building campers. Eventually they got into providing um, interior fabrics for, I believe, the camping and RV industry as well as the marines. So boats, yachts, that kind of thing. Um, anything to do with materials for those recreational type vehicles, they provided it. Um, and this this little Juki would have um, excelled at that kind of work. Very fast sewer um, and uh, you know just sewing thin materials together it excels at that. Perhaps a little light for what I'm doing with it. Um, if you're serious about leather work perhaps light for that as well. It does not have a walking foot where the, the foot walks as well as the feed dogs underneath. It just stays stationary like a home sewing machine. But it's going to work just fine. <coughs> and honestly, um, you saw I just sewed through an eighth inch of door panel board, Dacron, and heavy upholstery. It sews fine, it's just, it could be better. But it's what I've got. So I also wish the the span here, the throat, I don't know what you would call it, would be wider. Um, and maybe one day I'll get a machine with that as well. Um, and a little bit longer of a stitch length I would like. But I'm going to get by just fine with this. I will show you briefly how fast this thing can sew. I mean, if they wanted to, they could have been putting out the yardage. Got my threads pulled out so I don't get them all tangled up here, but I'll just put the hammer down. I mean, if you're running material through there, I mean, you're, you're going for it. So anyway, that's the machine. Not 100% ideal, but I am so glad I have it. Um, let's go dissect the door panel and get into this. Now these door panels present their own set of challenges, but we're going to get it. Flip it over here and show you what we've got going on. So we have three edges with the similar tack strip. You can see I have nails sticking up here and they're all gone here and that's because they were basically worn out rusty um, it's called being 80 years old almost you know so we're gonna have to figure out how to replace those nails in that metal strip if we can in fact reuse it we have our piece of stainless trim between the vinyl on the bottom and the material on the top and these nails are holding that on they're just folded over hopefully we can reuse them we'll see what's going on there once we get it off and then the vinyl along the bottom it's just folded over um, yep that all right so I'm just gonna do the same thing I did on the rear panels just start unhooking this stuff probably Eh, it's gonna come off. This old Naga hide or vinyl just is crumbly. Pretty much got all the fabric loose. Now I want to go after the nails here. And that holds the stainless trim on.
and this thing is dirty. Alright, so here's our new board. I'm just going to do my best. Let's see, the straightest edge is going to be the bottom. So we will start there. Alright, I've got my straight edge lined up with panel board. Now we just trace her out like we're in kindergarten again. This thing is completely missing here. So I'm going to have to double check. See I got a big slice out of it, a big old bite out of it down there. So I'll have to double check the door shape and get that. I, I'm assuming I could just take a, a compass and finish that curve or something that size. And I'm going to want to check that before I do anything. So the chunk was missing on the door we're working on. I went and looked at the door itself and it looked like two smaller curves with a straight portion in between. So I grabbed the other door panel and put it upside down from, from how I was drawing this one. And that really confirmed that. So we can kind of trace this out. So if I, if I would have gone ahead and done just a curb there, I probably could have gotten into, you know, and if I had brought it all the way out here, that would have interfered with the door closing. So, there we go. Let's cut it out. Okay, I pretty much have our panel board all finished. One more job I need to do. Took my straight edge and from this lower notch here to the lower notch there, drew a straight line. That is what the holes are going to be along for our stainless trim. Now I'm going to just center this up about a quarter inch from each end. It looks about right. Just hold it in place and mark base of every nail. Just like so. So here's what's going down now. As you can see, um, Fisher Body or whoever made the panels to begin with, back in 48, 47, whatever, 
Um, they simply sewed the cloth directly to the panel. I've already said that. Now my my uh, the span of my from my needle to the frame of my machine is only uh, only about ten inches. So I could never reach these inner. I couldn't accomplish this. I could probably do the outer stitch here, but these inner ones I could never do. So I'm going to try something a little bit different, and hopefully it look it turns out looking very similar, if not exactly the same. So I've got my measurements for my materials. I'm going to go ahead and cut those, and then we'll start sewing them together. Okay, I have our vinyl cut. Maybe it's vinyl. Um, I've got our other upholstery here. I've got a nap to it. It is going. We want the top of the panel here, bottom here, because I can see I can draw a line in it that way, and it's smooth this way. And I think I will cut it over there so that the extra will be a continuation of this piece need to preserve as much as possible here. So the combination of these two materials just makes something slicker than homemade snot. So I gotta find a really good way. I mean, look at that. It's just wow. So I tried pinning it, I've tried clipping it, I've tried sewing both ends, pinning it in the center. Everything just wants to move when I when it's under the foot, presser foot of the sewing machine, they just start moving everywhere, no matter what I do. So finally, just on the other panel, finally came in and started putting staples, just household, household staples in it. So I'm going to do that about every four inches or so. I'm going to staple the ends as well. Hopefully this thing will stay on us. See, even stapling it, I'm having problems.
Okay, whether or not it shows up well on camera, I don't know, but I've got my stitch pattern drawn out in chalk on the upholstery. Um, now, since I'm not going through the panel board, I am going, I need something to stitch to. I suppose a guy could just try stitching this single level and you'd get a stitch pattern, but I want a little more depth in there involving my Dacron. So I'm going to sandwich this in between the upholstery and then this is just a cotton muslin cheap stuff that I will put on the back side and it's just big enough to cover our pattern basically. So I'm going to be sewing that and in hindsight I'm doing this a little different than I had imagined in my head initially. Um, there's no point in having this the size of the entire panel. So because it's this small I could have just not sewn the vinyl to this yet and just had the the upholstery separate and this would have been a little bit easier at the sewing machine but too late now so I'm gonna sandwich these together and hopefully slowly carefully with much gusto and intelligence get that pattern sewn in there been using chalk on this about the best option that I have I bought a fabric marking pencil but it just you can't see it at all maybe yellow would work a little better yellow chalk I don't know it gets kind of hard to see as I'm sewing but I just retrace that line and I'm gonna do it again Hey, did you, uh, you see KU beat North Carolina? No, I was way too busy winding bobbins. All right, I'm getting ready to do the last stitch here, the last line in our detail. That's the longest one with the, the curve, the right angle curve. Just gonna go slow, be careful, pay attention, all that good stuff. It's also why I rewound the bobbin. I didn't want to run out in the middle of this and just create a headache. So we know we got that going for us.
There we go. Now I could even trim this back quite a ways. Top and side. I don't know that it's necessary. Get rid of the chalk line here. Think, can you see that pretty good? Yeah, you can see that. Now I've got one more thing to do. Um, on the original panel, they, I don't know if they sewed it, well they must have sewed it in obviously. Um, I don't know if they glued it to the board first, but they have about an eighth inch of solid pressed, I don't know if it was cotton batting, that was very much compressed, but it was almost just like an eighth inch uh, solid piece of foam made out of cotton that filled these strips or backed them up. I should probably say they were put on the board and then just sewn around. So I think what I'm going to try first is take more of that panel board, cut it to size if I have enough. Um, I could even use masonite and I will slip it in. These are basically pockets here. I'll slip it in behind the Dacron the batting so that it's still cushioned. I will sand the edges so that we don't have a sharp 90 degree edge sticking up but it's more of a bevel um, and that's just going to be the way I accomplish that uh, and hopefully I don't that's going to add weight to the center of the panel and obviously we're not sewed to our board um, I'm going to be sewn across the top and across the bottom. I'm going to be pulled tight, pulled tight on all the edges. Hopefully that will mean this won't be loose. But I could, maybe before I pull the front and back edges tight and get them on those tack strips, I could get in here with some contact cement, spray that in there, and then make sure that's stuck down to the board, which is probably what I should do. But we'll get to that when we come to it. Right now I'm going to go cut pieces and see how that looks when I slide them in there. Unfortunately my door panel material, this, I don't have long enough scraps to get this done. So I just cut a piece of masonite. It's just like pegboard material, only there's no holes. Now I cut it, these are three and a half inches. The pockets, I cut this at three and a quarter. We'll see how that goes. I'm afraid this Dacron may be a little bit of a pain. And obviously I'll need to cut that corner. Yeah, I think that's going to work nice. That really took the wrinkles out of it and popped it out once I pull that tight around the edges she gonna look good so I'm gonna cut two more and I'll round the edge of one and then we'll take a look at it so I was just using all the same tools as I did to uh, cut out the door panel to make those table saw jigsaw for the corner belt sandered around the edges smooth but I wanted to show you what I was talking about See this strip here? It's just like a solid pressed cotton, I guess. And maybe a guy could track down some foam. Um, I've got the edges rounded on the masonite. I don't think it's going to be a bit of a problem. The edges are going to be, it's still going to be padded with the Dacron. Edges will be rounded over. Um, I really don't see a problem with what I'm doing. Maybe I'm wrong. What's that hole for? Hmm. All right, I've got my material where I want it on the board. Everything's nice and straight for the most part. Stretch kind of tight. Just got these clips on it. There they go. That's fine. Now what would be best is to throw this vinyl out in the sun and get the, get the seam to fold over nice and crisp. Um, 
I don't have any sun today, so a guy could also take it in, throw something over it, and try to iron it, iron a crease into it. I'm just going to try it. I can get it to fold, and then once I've got this pushed in, obviously it should stay. It may take a bit of finagling, but we'll get it. Got a funny wrinkle right here so I released three of the nails or whatever you want to call them and what I thought was going on was the case here's my folded over seam of vinyl and like I was saying earlier probably be a good idea to iron that flat fold it over Just need to. I think that's actually caught behind that nail. Well, I'll mess around with it and I'll get it. got some top stitching done here on this vinyl that is our that's our span where there was some foam rubber um, kind of crescent moon shape kind of half circle shaped rubber up underneath there to give that a round profile and that would seal up against the um, the sill plate on the bottom of the door opening and I bought some 5 8 backer rod from a hardware store. That's just what you would put in the gap um, for, of your rough, and op rough opening around a new window that you would put in. So I just got that, cut it in half, give me my half circle shape, and that's what I'm going to put back in there. Um, now the stitching is wider I wanted a nice wide quarter inch stitch which is wider than that machine can do I mentioned that earlier I w was kinda wishing it could do a much wider stitch length um, so I actually took this thing inside sat on the floor and used a stitching awl and I think that brought quite a bit of amusement to my bride because she sat there on the couch taking pictures of me sitting on the floor sewing um, so here's some pictures of that but you know if you don't have a machine and you want to do this job you could actually uh, mimic what the factory did with a stitching awl 
get all this all the way through the panel board. If you have the patience, you have the time, um, I, I can achieve the look the way I've done it. I really wanted to do it with the sewing machine, but I could have done this all by hand with the stitching all. Um, but this took long enough. Just spanning the width of one board took long enough. So um, that's what I did. I've got my tack strip back on there, so now I'm going to sneak this in and run it home, I guess. Now I'm getting back to the point on the door panel where I want to put our strips, our tack strips, or our trim, these things, back on. And I thought I'd show you, come over to the door and show you, if you missed the video where I took this all off, certainly go back and watch that. Um, but what they did to hold these panels in place back then was they just punched slots into the metal, and then when you drive your nail in there, that that holds it, prevents it from coming back out. Um, and there, you know, you can come up with different ways to do it with modern fasteners if you want. Screw a panel directly to the metal, just like they did on the bottom corners. They had trim screws down there. Um, I am going to do it the original way. That's what we're doing on this car. So I've been straightening and replacing broken nails. If you are going to remove a door panel, that's original. Just expect some of these nails are going to break loose from the strip, from the metal. It's old. What do you expect? Um, so I'm just driving new fluted nails through the metal. And where, where you can, I mean, you can tell there's going to be a hole there where they break free. And uh, that'll get it lined back up and that'll work just fine. They've got a channel along the bottom, and that accepts the bottom tack strip along the bottom edge of the door. Um, and then one thing I overlooked when I was cutting out my door panel were these two hooks right here. I should have cut two small rectangular holes through the panel, and I completely overlooked it. So I will have to go back very carefully with like a Dremel tool or something and just notch out a rectangle so that that'll grab. Um, other than that, I'm just going to keep straightening and repairing these and uh, continue on. Now you'll notice I'm not cleaning these up in any way other than just getting what's loose off. Um, I certainly would not want to use um, sandblaster or a wire wheel on these. I think that would just absolutely devastate all the sharp spikes on them. The most I would want to do is dip it in a solution like evaporust, vinegar, citric acid, something like that to remove the surface rust. But I would even be careful with that. It's such, such thin stuff. Um, evaporust would probably be your best option. I'm not too worried about it. It's not going to hurt a thing to leave it as it is. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue on working on these and we will see you in a bit.
Now, no, I am not installing them yet. I don't want to be coming in and having here with the seats and the carpet and everything and brushing against this. These will be the last thing, or next to last, who knows, um, what I actually install. And I warned you from the beginning, if you've been following along, that I'm going to take you along in the order that I'm doing things. So, you're just going to have to come back around if you really want to see me install these. But I do want to make the incision for my handle, the shafts for the, the regulators and so forth. So I'm just going to just feel for it and cut it open. That'll be good enough for now. If you have one of the pricier models, you'd have a door handle yet to contend with, and you'd have other stainless, a swoopy piece of trim here, I believe, and all kinds of other things, but on this cheap model, that's all we got to worry about. And I'm also going to wait with these, but I just couldn't resist getting at least one out. To see and how it was going to look. But there's the, the new escutcheon. Um, every single piece of plastic on the old ones is just dried out and crumbly and rotten. So I had to get new ones of those, new knobs, and we'll have to replace all that, shine up the handles. But it's going to look pretty classy. So once again, here we have the original. There we have our new version and I'm getting it terribly dirty doing that. Anyway, I've got both rear panels done. I've got the driver side door panel done. I just need to finish up the passenger side. Um, tell me what you think. Leave a comment down below. I hope it's at least adequate for you. Um, I think it turned out pretty well. There might be just one or two things I'm going to do a little bit differently, but basically everything that I showed you on this first one, I'm going to do again on the second one. Um, if you want to see me installing this, stick around, subscribe, come back, whatever. Um, I will be getting to that eventually, but first, headliner, carpet, rebuilding seats, and then these will be the last thing to go back in. Well, this one. This has to go in before the rear seat. That will go in last. So thanks a lot for coming around and joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you approve. God bless you guys. We'll see you on the next one. We suggest that you like and subscribe now.